I think the biggest talent issue we have um, is to have a diverse and divergent talent force, essentially. And the reason why I believe that is all our work is about communicating, as I say, from the street to the street. Because these, you know, we, we do work that results in how people feel, how they engage with brands, and therefore we have to be relevant to all people mm -hmm. and all communities. What are the big talent issues that you're facing in your company and the business is facing in terms of attracting, retaining, recruiting talent? We have over-professionalized ourselves in my view. Um, and we haven't had enough divergent people, people not from universities, people not in the same colour, and obviously women as well. Mm -hmm. And we haven't enabled them to come through. So I'm putting a lot of things in place to attract people who may not have gone to university, who may not have considered advertising uh, as a route, and, that, uh, and experimenting with having people from different areas, bringing them in, trialling it, connecting with high schools, connecting with mm -hmm. people from the University of Life, doing different ways to mm. have um, a brief so we make sure on every job spec that we have different types of people to, to change the nature of our workforce because our business is changing and we need to be at the forefront with, with people who represent that. So you want people with different ideas, different mindsets who will challenge yes. conventional wisdom, things like that. I agree, and I know when you're gonna come on to this. My view is when people talk about diversity, they think about uh, women, sexuality, yeah. ethnicity. I, I actually think about divergent thinking, mm. divergent backgrounds, different types mm. of people. Uh, exp I'm very expressive, but they may be introverted. I think we have to enable different types of thinking so that we get ideas, because that's what we're in, we're in the business, and that comes through a clash and comes through different cultures. Mm. And actually, we're an entrepreneurial business, yeah. and therefore business people from the street tend to represent mm -hmm. that. So there is a business rationale for diversifying your talent pool? Well, just before, there's some parallels to what you've just said, Tamara, because I think if you look at Khan Lion and then you look at the industry, I mean, you, you basically said there's been an over-professionalism of Khan. Yeah. And, and now that you pointed out, with, I, would, I would agree. And then the same is happening in industry. So we've kind of creativity has been diluted because of, you know, a business impact, the business rationale. And if you look at Diversity is an example. It's been over-professionalized as well. It's been taken, the, diverse, the, the broad diversity of thinking, creativity, has actually been captured by almost political issues. You know, gender, uh, where I come from in, in the Pacific, it's more around, um, uh, you know, Asia-Pacific diversity. Uh, so it's really interesting. We kind of narrow things down in our thinking and we narrow things down in our approach. And I think there's some great parallels to what you've just said. So the talent, the, 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 the talent challenges being faced by the industry are exactly that the diversity of thinking and the divergence of where you attract talent, how you actually retain them has actually been narrowed down. And I think that's a really interesting parallel. The CEO has to be the champion of this. And I mean, Tamara, you've actually been very outspoken and, and, and positive things around diversity and the talent um, equation. I think within the industry in particular, not all CEOs are there. There's some rhetoric there, but then the, the, the demonstrated behaviors are not quite catching up yet. Now, uh, Justin, you were mentioning the uh, survey, the annual CEO survey mm -hmm. that PwC has done. 77% of CEOs say they, they simply can't get the talent. No, well, well no, so, uh, so of the 1,400 participants, I mean, this is a, a, a study that we run every year, it's the 20th year. This year, it's really interesting um, because 77% of CEOs, and I mean, these are a large com global companies, are saying they don't believe they have the talent to drive growth. Oh, I see. So, I mean, that's, I, I mean, if you look at the underlying themes of what CEOs are, uh, you know, are kept up at night um, worrying about is you know, growth, regional growth, growth or acquisition, divestitures, but underlying that is, but we're not sure we have the talent to actually drive that growth. Mm. So I think everything that Tamara has said, I would totally agree with. And I think it's interesting because I don't necessarily agree on the Silicon Valley. I think there's oh, a lot you're of- you're with me then. I'm totally with you. I think there's a lot of hype around, this, uh, around the Silicon Valley, but I think when you look at what the CEOs are, are saying in our study, they're saying that they, the specific talent that they need within their industries, and this is a cross industry study, is, they are concerned that they don't necessarily have that talent to drive into spe you know, specific growth agendas. Yeah.